Welcome to our midweek devotional with Pastor Matt, where we pause in the midst of our busy lives to seek God's presence and find encouragement in His Word. Let's take this time together to refocus our hearts, renew our minds, and draw closer to the One who gives us strength for each new day. Stay tuned as Pastor Matt dives into a powerful devotional that will inspire and uplift your spirit. And now, Pastor Matt. Hello and welcome back to our devotion time. Today, once again, I will be reading out of the book, Five Marks of a Methodist, The Fruit of a Living Faith. And today's chapter, A Methodist Rejoices in God. Our scripture comes from Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Don't be sad because the joy from the Lord is your strength. When one of my best friends sends me a personal note or email, he ends the correspondence by using these words, with his joy. For him, the phrase is much more than a happy-go-lucky way of ending a communication. It captures the spirit of biblical living. My friend has lived long and deeply in God. He and his family have experienced the ups and downs of life the successes and failures, the joys and sorrows. But on any given day, if I receive a message from this mentor, it will likely end with the words, with his joy. While standing in the stream of the Christian saints, John Wesley included joy in the first mark of discipleship when he said, God is the joy of his heart. But rather than let it go at that, he made rejoicing in God the second mark of discipleship. He shows us that joy, like everything else, flows from the love of God. But rather than being blended into love in some kind of certain way, joy stands on its own as a distinctive evidence that we are living as Jesus' disciples. With an echo of Nehemiah's words to the people, Wesley was saying, the joy from the Lord is your strength. What role does joy play in following Christ? Simply this, discipleship is a whole life response to grace. We make a mistake when we define the spiritual life only in terms of its religious dimensions. We fail to grasp what God is offering us when we limit it to the cognitive element. Joy is the word used by Christians in every age to describe the comprehensive response we make out of our whole being to God's love. That's why Wesley made joy the second mark of a disciple. And from that simple word joy, he moved on to further define it. The basis for our joy, Wesley writes, is the atonement, the moment, and the process where we are reconciled with God. Jesus' death upon the cross is the objective proof of God's love. And because he died for us, we can live for him. We do this because we know our sins are forgiven. Wesley observed that the disciple rejoices over the deliverance from the horrible pit with all his transgression blotted out as a cloud. Here is the basis for our assurance, and here is the motivation for our readiness to forgive others. This is why we pray through the Lord's Prayer, forgive us the ways we have wronged you, just as we forgive those who have wronged us. The little word as takes us in more than one direction. It means in ways that are comparable, so we pray, help us forgive others in ways similar to God's forgiveness of us. It can also mean simultaneous. So we pray, in the midst of experiencing God's forgiveness, give us the desire to forgive others. 
We are God's forgiven and forgiving people. This reconciliation with God and with others is the source of our joy. This assurance becomes the incentive for our hope. John Wesley says that our redemption not only provides present blessings, it also gives us a vision of the glory that is about to be revealed. Again, drawing on ideas given by Peter, Wesley calls this a living hope. It is an experience of God that isn't defined, but rather one that is real in the present moment. Anticipation doesn't produce postponement. And all of this, Wesley writes, is for me, not in the sense of selfishness, but in the sense of being applied uniquely to each and every one of us. Like fingerprints that made us unique and unrepeatable sons and daughters of God, we are given a distinctive soul print, not just the life of God in the human soul, but the life of God in my soul. Wesley had a conversation with the Moravian minister August Spangenberg upon arrival as a missionary in Georgia. Spangenberg asked Wesley if he knew Jesus was his savior, and Wesley replied, I know he is the savior of the world. But Spangenberg wouldn't let it end there. He asked again, but is he your savior? Wesley responded in the affirmative, but later wrote in his journal, I fear they were vain words. The Spirit of God began to move in Wesley's heart, showing him that God isn't interested in a vague, impersonal relationship, but is interested in a heart-to-heart, life-to-life relationship that connects to the unique people that we are. On this basis, we can move into each day of our lives with God's joy. A disciple rejoices in God. Charles Wesley took this conviction and set it to music. Rejoice the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. And three things to be thinking about in the coming days. Reflect on the phrase, discipleship is a whole life response to grace. What two or three thoughts come to your mind? Second, respond to the statement, joy is the mark of discipleship that gives us courage and confidence. And finally, why do you believe that reconciliation with God is crucial in giving our joy its proper meaning? Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time. This has been Midweek Devotional with Pastor Matt from Church of the Good Shepherd. 3025 Lucas Derry Road, Grafton, West Virginia, 26354. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Our Sunday service begins at 10 a.m. We would love to see you there. Holy Communion is served the first Sunday of every month. Remember, with His joy.